Yadikshu Wenwen, good morning. I'm so excited to be here with my good friend Fiona and our new friend Sheila. My name is Rachel and I work as a dietitian, diabetes educator. And I'm originally from Northern BC and my father's side, I'm a member of the Lachlan Band. Hi everyone, it's me, Fiona. I'm a white settler of Irish ancestry, first generation to Turtle Island. And we are so excited to be back on another episode of the iSparks Food is Medicine show. We are on the beautiful homelands of the Nkakatlam peoples. We have had the best two days. Um, Nkakatlam homelands is uh, close to the Lytton town. Many of our viewers are aware of what's happened on these lands in this last year. I actually just got shivers and a bit emotional thinking about what we saw yesterday. And we have learned to understand the impacts of climate change, but also we're able to go out on the land and learn about the important food systems. And then today we get to cook all these delicious foods and eat with our new friends. So we have Sheila here. I'll let Sheila introduce herself to our viewers. Thank you, Fiona. Yedik Shin Wenwen, Sheila Adams Hand Squashed, Megum Tim and Clackwen. Good morning, my name is Sheila Adams and I'm from here, this homeland of Snake Platte. And thank you for being here. And thank you for sharing, Fiona. Um, it was a great privilege to get to um, be on the lands with the Adams family. And we are gonna share some of the foods today that we harvested yesterday. Um, so firstly, we're gonna make a deer stew, which is really exciting. Um, your husband caught this deer. Yes, thank you. Cooks jam. Yeah, and for this recipe, you could use deer, moose, elk, lean beef, whatever you have at home. We also have, you know, for people that don't have access to meat or want a vegetarian option, you could also use beans as well. And we have a really fun new ingredient as well, some pine mushrooms that Sheila harvested last year, which have been frozen, backy packed and frozen. So we're gonna play around with those a little bit. But from the land yesterday, we got some nettles and dadun. Dadun, thank you very much. So very excited. Um, those are some wild potatoes. And the rest of the table's set with some ingredients that we're gonna add to the stew, which I can talk to as we add. And then here we have a few things that you could add to the stew if you would like in season. So if you didn't have pine mushrooms, you could use regular mushrooms. Um, we have some butternut squash there, some cauliflower, which I often like to use if we use less potato, and of course some corn when it's, when it's in season as well. And then Sheila has graciously offered to show us how she makes a deer or elk or moose stew in a slow cooker. I personally don't have a slow cooker and I'm a little bit scared of them, so I'm really excited that Sheila's gonna walk us through that. I have only ever used crock pod, so I'm hanging out over here. So I really <laughs> am excited the idea that you could make a stew in two hours. Like it just sounds, really great so and I love your recipes so let's do it okay yeah so I'll do I'll walk you through my fast version of the stew and then we'll have Sheila show us how to do it in a slow cooker which I'm also excited to learn about so first a little bit of olive oil in this pot so about maybe a tablespoon so this pot's already been heated up and then next we're gonna add this this is usually the recipe I use is about one pound of wild meat or store-bought meat and this is maybe slightly over so we might have to adjust the liquid but that's totally fine so we're just going to add this to the pot and what's your husband name that our hunter my husband's name is uh, michael sam michael sam well cooks jam for such beautiful meat amazing so we're just going to let this brown for about five to seven minutes and Fiona, why do you like wild meat as That's an option? so funny, I was just staring at it, like having this deep connection to it, watching it cook, but it's actually the community members that have helped me really think about um, wild game in a different way. But I think about, you know, it's healthier, purer, it's more it's closer to home, you know, local eating. But I also think of iron, um, I know that uh, wild game is really high in iron and I'm a woman and so I always think about how much I need that. And then of course leaner, it's a leaner, um, there you know you think about deer moving around, always running around, hopping around, so those are the two things that come to mind. How about yourself? I also love wild meat because it's a great source of iron. Uh, a lot of our traditional foods that we used to get iron from aren't as available anymore. 
Well, the other great thing about wild meat is that it's really high in protein, and that's because it's low in fat. So lower in fat, higher in protein. Um, so we're just gonna let this cook again for about five to seven minutes total. And as this is cooking, uh, Sheila, do you wanna walk us through how you make it in a slow cooker? My method is mainly in the slow cooker because uh, I feel that when I cook it in the pot, uh, a lot of the fresh vegetables and that break down and I like to keep my vegetables like firm. So that's why I use the slow cooker. And today I made uh, a basic, just the, the deer meat and the pine mushrooms. And then I'll thicken it up later with, uh, with the gravy. So this is one method that I do, but I also do in the slow cooker the method that Rachel has shown us with a lot of vegetables. And I like to layer it. I layer my, my deer meat and then I, I put the, all the spices in there. And I put, I use a cream of mushroom soup um, also as flavor. And then I put my pine mushrooms, my potatoes, my carrots, my celery and my onion on the top. And I put the water level just just to the top of the vegetables just because I don't want too much liquid because the pine mushroom creates more liquid. So, and I let it sit there for like about maybe five hours. That's why uh, I put it on about lunchtime and it'll be ready about five o'clock. And my last, uh, I don't even open the lid. I just keep the lid closed. And you do it on low or medium? What's your... Uh, I usually do it on four to six uh, hours on high. On high. On high. Yes, and then the, my last method is just opening it up, stirring it and thickening it with... Uh, I use cornstarch. Some people use uh, flour, but I prefer cornstarch. And what is it about deer meat that you love so much? Well, I feel that the deer meat or the moose meat or elk uh, is uh, very lean and uh, I'd rather use it because it's more healthier. And I find myself, I never buy from the store when I have to make stew. I always rely on the wild meats that I need. That's how I make my stew. And so pine mushrooms, were these put in together this morning and then some liquid added or were they done? Like, how did you do just this, this one? Yes, I just layered it again. I just put the, the meat with the spices and my cream of mushroom soup and, and the pine mushrooms. And I added just enough liquid to come up to the like where the mushrooms are, and uh, just left it at that. Delicious. Mm -hmm. uh, cook's jam for sharing. I can't wait to eat it. Okay, so the meat's been browning. Now we're gonna add our liquid. And Sheila let me know this is a good time to add the pine mushrooms. So if you're using pine mushrooms, you would add them now with the liquid. And then we're gonna let it cook for about 45 minutes to an hour, and then we're gonna add the vegetables. All right, so the liquid we have, so it's stock that you use. Usually what I do, cause I'm, you know, kind of like to take shortcuts is just add water. And then if you wanna use stock, you could use something like this and you could just add this directly into the soup, but we're just gonna use water and then we'll kind of taste it and see if it needs some added stock. So is this kind of a little concentrated stock? So you'd put like a teaspoon or something in? Yeah, you'd read the back and usually it's like okay. a teaspoon per cup. So I like to add it at the end because I like to really taste the flavor of the food. But if you're feeling like it's not getting enough depth um, because it's not in a slow cooker, then you can kind of rely on some of these concentrated flavors. And then we're gonna add some rosemary. So we have some fresh rosemary here. Um, so you can add about a tablespoon or however much you like. Um, dried is absolutely fine as well. There we go. And then these beautiful pine mushrooms, which I'm so excited about. There we go. And then I like to use a little bit of lemon, which can help to soften um, the meat, um, especially if you're not doing it in a slow cooker. Um, you do need to, you know, you want the meat to be nice and tender, so this can help. So would you use a half a lemon for a big pot like this? Yeah, I think a half a lemon would be fine. You okay. know, got a tablespoon. So this is a pretty big lemon. Nice. And then maybe a little bit of pepper. And we were learning the word for meat. Smitch? Smitch? Smeed. Smeed. Totally wrong. Smeage. So all meats are smeage. All right, now we're going to bring this to a boil 
and then turn down the heat, let it simmer for about 45 minutes an hour, and then we'll come back. Wonderful. I'm so excited. We are going to eat such deliciousness. Thank you, Rachel, for sharing your recipe and Cook Jam for uh, sharing your mushrooms, your meat, and your recipe. Cook's G. Okay, so while the stew is cooking, Fiona's taking it away, she's tending to it. Me and Sheila are gonna talk you through this healthy snack, dessert, with some other goodies from these lands. Um, so first I just wanted to show these hazelnuts. So a lot of people don't know um, hazelnuts were native to Turtle Island. Um, these ones here are grown in Chilliwack and um, you know, you can purchase them many different places. And these ones are already roasted, so they have that kind of like toasty, crunchy taste. I love them as a snack, but also adding them to um, a dessert like yogurt. And can you tell us what these are? This is huckleberries, and uh, in our language we call it saltella. And when we uh, we harvest that usually in um, late August, September, we travel down to the valley to to harvest. So. Very it's quite cool. a it's quite a ways to go for us to harvest, but we managed to get it. And we call it like our goal because it's we have it on special occasions. Oh, thank you so much for sharing. These are like gold or, or nature's candy. So these have been frozen, and you can see here that I've actually just added the frozen berries to this plain yogurt. I personally love eating frozen berries. Um, what about you? Do you usually normally? Ref defrost them or have them frozen? Usually frozen and we have it with our breakfast or just as a snack. Yeah, lovely, great. And of course, if you don't have access to um, wild berries, you could get the store-bought store -bought berries and these are some blackberries, but you just let me know that this area has a lot of blackberries, is that right? In the Chilliwack area, we like to even travel down that way to harvest the, the blackberries because it grows just all over down in that area. Amazing, thank you. Um, and so yeah, just to kind of talk you through this, um, I use plain Greek yogurt often. It's high in protein, so it's gonna keep us full. And then I like to top it with berries if you have them or some other chopped up fruit like apples or if you like bananas, you can use sliced bananas. And then a little bit of crunch. I love the hazelnuts like I mentioned because they are local, but sunflower seeds, hemp seeds, pumpkin seeds, whatever you have. And if you're not totally a fan of plain yogurt, you could use a little bit of honey or natural jam to sweeten it. Um, I always say, you know, a teaspoon of honey is way less sugar than what they add um, in the grocery store flavored yogurts, which could have up to four teaspoons of added sugar compared to one of the honey. So this is something we're gonna enjoy later after our stew is finished. Thanks so much for sharing. Thank you, Rachel. Okay, so this has been boiling or simmering for about 45 minutes to an hour. Whoops. And so you can already kind of give this, have the, like the smell of the mushrooms and the deer. Oh, wow. That smells amazing. Yeah. And you can see the broth looks quite nutritious. It's mm -hmm. amazing. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add the vegetables. So we have here one onion, three carrots, and three celery, which I've diced up. This is generally the size I like to use for a stew, kind of bite-sized sizes. Um, and this is kind of also the base you would use if you were gonna make your own stock. So we're gonna boil this for an hour, so it's almost like we're making a stock within the stew. Mm. So I'll just put this all in here. Okay, and what we're also gonna add is some potato. So, <laughs> we have here, so this is the Yukon Gomel potato. And the reason I like this one is because it doesn't tend to spike blood sugars as much as, say, a russet potato. And also the skin is quite, um, a lot of people like to eat the skin on this one. I do too. Yeah, so I have a vegetable brush, so I usually when I wash it, I just kind of give it a good scrub, and then we can keep the skin on. And the reason why the skin is beneficial is because that's where the fiber is. Um, and the fiber helps to stabilize our blood sugars, can help with cholesterol, so heart disease um, prevention. And often all the goodness in a vegetable is right underneath the skin as well. So I love leaving the skin on. Um, I actually opted to use less potato in this recipe. So this is about two potato. I know you love potato, but we are using two potatoes. Yeah, so that, I don't potato. love it all a bit. <laughs> so just a little bite now and then, it keeps things going. Okay. Um, and uh, the reason why is because we're actually gonna serve this with some brown wild rice mix as well. So Beautiful. Um, this would be a food that could spike your blood sugars a little bit. Same with rice, even though it's a healthy rice, so we have less of them if we want to have them together. And say if you were gonna use corn, 
Um, you might use less of the potato or not serve it with rice. So we'll add this in. And I also love the skin on vegetables because it also keeps me fuller for longer. So that fiber mm. kind of fills your stomach up so you don't eat as much. Yeah, right. Thank yeah. you. Um, so now that all the vegetables are in, we're gonna cook it again for about 45 minutes to an hour. And then right before it's finished cooking, um, we're gonna add in some nettles, which we harvested yesterday, um, as well as some, this is some cornstarch or corn flour. So it's about a tablespoon, which we're gonna mix with two tablespoons of water. And then we're gonna add it to the stew, which will help thicken it up. Um, and I sh we should mention the potatoes, um, the wild potatoes mm -hmm. that we harvested yesterday. So of course this would be an option um, if you wanted to add them to your stew and, and likely much um, better for blood sugar levels, much higher in fiber. Um, but it is a bit of a different process to cook. So you would cook them and take the skin off and then add them to the stew. So tatoon? Tatoon. Tatoon, um, the beautiful little potato that we got to and we went and it was a meadow full of these beautiful white flowers. It was just so beautiful. And that was kind of coming up for me as a lover of potato. Yesterday while we were harvesting them and there was lots of chatter about, oh, that's a good one or not a good one. Or <laughs> <laughs> um, but just as like the difference in size. And I think about how nutritious these must be to be that tiny mm -hmm. and just like a little nutrition power punch. And just thinking about how our food has gotten so much bigger, our kind of our commercial food. But I just loved learning about these yesterday and really can't wait to, to eat them. But of course, they would be delicious mm -hmm. in a stew. Great. So we'll come back in about an hour and see how the stew's looking. The global warming, the fires is the, the, the most damaging of all our our native foods. Uh, once the fires pass through the, our, our traditional areas where our native foods grow, it takes years and years for it to, um, to regenerate, to supply it to our people. The, when they first come out, you don't have the flower on it. And that's where you peel the the skin off it and you eat it. It's really nice and sweet. And we call that tlaco in our language, tlaco. 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 Tlaco is that, this perk. Then after when it gets, it's starting to flower now, but after, later on in the summer, it's gonna, there's gonna be seeds on there, eh? It's almost like sunflower seeds and you boil it and you make tea out of it, it's real good. Does it have like, um, like I know the one that we, I'm a little bit familiar, has a bit of a celery taste. Does yeah, it's got a, a smell, yeah. yeah. Like you can smell it here. It's got the same smell when you make tea out of it, kind of, it's got that nice, nice strong flavor tea. Lovely. Our stew is gently um, cooking on the stove but I am Nahalmakin. I'm dry. Hi. Hi. So we need to drink something. And I brought my dear new friend. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself to our viewers? Yes. My name is Buster Adams. My Indian name is Kayak. And my father is quite welcome and native language. And we I'm very glad to be here with, with the people here to talk about our our hojum drink here very is very important to us as the kind of drink that's a very powerful medicine for the our Nakapu Nation people here. Mm. And thank you. As soon as we got here today, we started to make um, the shushum drink, yeah. right? And what did we do? We took a can of shushum that I had brought from Cowichan. Yeah, we made it some water, half a jug of water, and we dumped the whole bottle in there. And this was, uh, we didn't put no sugar or nothing at all. It was sweet, they're really sweet enough. But usually we use, um, in our tradition, sometimes they put sugar or any kind of sugar or on the end of sometimes. But most of the time, when we were growing up, our grandparents never used sugar. They used um, shakum, saskatoon berries for sweetener. And that's, 
There was lots of Saskatoon bushes. There's still, lot, there's still yep. lots of Saskatoon bushes, yet. And the swisher, they're quite tart, right? Oh yeah, the people, it's really bitter for them to, oh, yeah. a lot of people can't, can't just eat a berry. A lot of people like to eat it. Right out when you pick it, they eat it for medicine and it really helps your system out. Some people say they like to eat it before or after dinner to help digest the fats or... Another thing too, when you, we make uh, ice cream out of that too, eh? we beat it and we'll, and it's just like um, a tuck that we'll call it Indian ice cream. That's really good too, that stuff. But this was really simple. It was just the canned juice and then we yeah. smashed all the berries and the juice came in and we just added water. But you knew right away that whoever canned it must have added some sugar. Yeah, cause right? you could taste the sugar right away on it. Like, you usually go to a, when we do it, we just freeze the I freeze it. But the whole time we used to dry it because we didn't have no freezers or bottles in. But the so you just dry it in the sun? Dry it in the sun. And I guess you put ch on a chocolate in there, a soft cranberries, and you match them together for sweetener. Eh? Yeah. Well, Cook's Jam for sharing this delicious drink, and we'll be drinking it throughout the day. Hey, thanks. Cook's Jam. Cheers, everyone. So we finished up the stew. What we did was we added um, one tablespoon of cornstarch mixed with two tablespoons of water, added that in, let it boil a little bit, and then added in the nettles that we harvested yesterday, which is really exciting. So the colors are beautiful. So we're gonna serve this up to our friends and hopefully, hopefully they approve. And it's key what you just said about the cornstarch and the cold water that you mix that separately and then add it because otherwise it's kind of chunky in the... I think I might have done that before, that's why. <laughs> I'm just sharing. <laughs> it looks amazing. Great. And do you want to share? And we have the uh, the deer stew here with the pine mushrooms as well, and it we're going to dish it up, uh, dished up one already for our friends here and uh, my family. So this is the pine and uh, the deer and the gravy. We also thickened it up with a uh, little bit of the cornstarch too, to make the gravy. Wow, what beautiful dishes we have. Well, Sheila, we're so grateful that you brought us mushrooms and deer, and just that we had these amazing foods to connect with, but actually help us ground us in these lands. Like it's been an amazing couple days. I actually am starving and can't wait to eat. And I'm um, just grateful both of you showed me um, your recipes for deer, moose, elk, stew. We can kind of have it any which way. So we uh, just want to also thank our viewers for their time, but also remind them to connect to the relief efforts here. If you can donate or if you can support um, these communities and rebuilding and reconnecting and any um, work that you can support on revitalizing Indigenous food systems as well. But thank you to um, the Adams family for having us and for the community for sharing their knowledge, wisdom. And um, I'm excited to sit and eat and uh, have a chat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you.